Welcome to the iBailey webinar, NetSuite for Software Companies. My name is Dino Farfante, and I'm the Director of Business Development for iBailey Technology Consulting. Today, we're going to introduce you to the NetSuite platform, and how NetSuite can be used to help your software company manage your platform business operations all on a single platform. Here's what we'll be reviewing today. First, we'll introduce you to our team on the phone and give you an introduction into iBailey and who we are. Then we'll introduce you to NetSuite and go over dashboards, reports, and business process areas that are relevant to software companies. Finally, we'll wrap up and take any questions and talk about next steps. So let's meet the team. Again, I'm Dino Farfante, Director of Business Development. I've been working with NetSuite for over 12 years as both a business owner that implemented NetSuite and a director over consulting practices. I have industry experience in both Fortune 500 and mid-market space and covering multiple ERP systems. On the phone with me today is Ethan Haberman. We'll be working, walking us through our webinar today. Ethan's an experienced IT manager, NetSuite implementer, and solutions engineer. He is certified in several NetSuite applications and has over six years experience, including NetSuite, SAP, and Microsoft. At iBailey, we like to think of ourselves as advisors first and technology providers second. We only succeed when our clients succeed, and that's why we're a driving force every day in helping you find the best way forward. We bring our knowledge, passion, and experience to transform the way you do business and deliver lasting results. iBailey has been around for over 100 years, and we're a top 20 CPA firm. But iBailey is more than an accounting firm. We're an award-winning consulting business, advisory, and business professional services firm. We're driven to help our clients take on the now and the next with inspired ideas, solutions, and results. Our team has experience that spans multiple industries using a proven services approach that focuses on business processes and user adoption. Our practice also specializes in complementary technologies like Salesforce, CRM, data analytics and integration, and advisory services. Our service offerings are always focused on helping with today's unique challenges. Other areas of importance for our firm helps you with looking at evaluating R&D tax credits, state and local tax compliance, and other accounting and tax services. Our NetSuite team provides services to clients across the United States. We have successfully implemented over 500 companies and boast an award-winning team. We have over 50 consultants holding over 100 certifications with an average experience of 10 plus years. Our team has earned America's Solution Provider of the Year for the last five years. This is an award based as much on customer experience and success as it is in strong growing of our NetSuite practice. NetSuite provides the leading cloud-based integrated ERP financials for software. Software as a service and managed service organizations leveraging NetSuite, your software company can manage its entire front end and back end office operations through a single flexible, powerful business application. Integrating advanced financials, revenue recognition, billing, CRM, and professional services, and much more. NetSuite provides a complete on-demand solution tailored to the unique needs of the software industry. As a software company, NetSuite understands the challenge of managing a customer and employees. NetSuite features software-specific capabilities that your company needs to address in the, in the evolving industry and requirements that you'll find important. Unlike on-premise vendors or niche tools that require high maintenance or don't focus on specific uh, requirements, NetSuite solution is built from a cloud up to help your company understand and manage performance and optimize revenue growth. Here's the demonstration topics Ethan will be presenting today. If you have any questions on other features, not in the presentation, the client desk managers will be available and can schedule time to review those with you. Ethan? Thanks, Dino. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen uh, if you wanna hand that over, Dino. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks for that introduction, Dino. Um, <clears throat> As Dino mentioned, we're gonna be spending some time going over some of the different functions and features the NetSuite has to offer uh, from a, uh, just a core ERP perspective, but then looking specifically at uh, different components that are really built and developed for the software industry. So if you're able to see my uh, NetSuite homepage right here, um, you can see it, I'm logged in right now as a uh, CFO. 
And so one of the things that you'll notice first off is I'm logged in right now using a web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, uh, but <clears throat> NetSuite is a completely browser agnostic um, system. So you're able to log in on any device, uh, any browser, um, uh, anywhere in the world that has internet access. We also do have uh, applications, uh, mobile applications for iOS and Android that allows you to uh, manage your business on the go, um, as well as a responsive interface, uh, be, being able to use mobile web browsers as well. As I mentioned, seeing here in the top right, I am logged in as a role of a CFO. So NetSuite is a, a completely role-based application, and, and these roles are going to determine uh, several different things. Uh, first off, it's going to determine my level of access into the system. So what uh, transactions and records I have access to and what level of access I have to those transactions. Um, additionally, it's going to determine what I'm going to see on my dashboard. And we're going to go over some of these different dashboard elements that are available here in just a minute. And then lastly, my role is going to determine up here what we call center tabs. So each role is really going to be developed um, to have a, a navigational structure that's going to be relevant and pertinent for the role that you're in. And these are something, uh, these are uh, uh, navigational structures that we also um, optimize um, for your team, depending on the different roles that you require within your organization. Uh, our dashboards are very customizable and really can provide um, relevant data to you and your employees. Uh, they can really drive the experience uh, of your employees by publishing dashboards to your different roles. So if you're wanting to control uh, the experience of, of what your uh, employees are seeing when they log into the system, you can create dashboards and publish those out to different individuals or to different roles. Uh, all of our dashboards are dynamic and relevant, um, so uh, they're very easy to, to use and to manipulate. As you can see, it's, it's all drag and drop. If I'm wanting to add additional components to my dashboard, I can do that. If I wanted to remove that I, um, right here, I can do that as well, if that's something that you choose to give your employees the permissions to do. You can also see that I'm looking at um, some specific date periods um, as I'm looking at some of the different metrics and, and KPIs on my dashboard. Um, if I'm wanting to change those uh, based on um, wanting to evaluate different periods of time, I can simply change my date range and it's actually going to in, uh, refresh my entire dashboard. So if I change the date range for this year versus last year, uh, hit done, you can see my entire dashboard is refreshing and it's going to give me uh, data based on the date range that I'm selected. You can also easily switch to other dates or go back to whatever um, ranges you had uh, set in your, um, in your default dashboard. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the different uh, elements here to give you an idea of how that, that may be uh, relevant for your organization and the different data that's going to be available here. Um, starting here at the top, um, this is what we call a dashboard tile. This dashboard tiles are just a visually striking way of displaying KPIs uh, for business users on a dashboard. Uh, we're looking at some basic software metrics here, uh, like annual recurring revenue, our monthly revenue, um, some upsell, downsell information. Um, but these can be configured uh, and displayed in a variety of different ways. Um, also, the appearance of these tile, including the colors and icons used to are specified via configuration as well. Um, we can show variances, um, ratios, or differences by comparing these KPIs to other static or dynamic values as well. It also includes the ability to do visual alerts to direct the attention um, of our users to metrics that might not meet specific thresholds based on what we're trying to track. As we move down here, you're going to see uh, the next element on my dashboard is a, a revenue by period trend. This is just what we call a trend graph. And a trend graph is used to visually display any trend um, or any KPI over time and allow you to pick, compare those to other KPIs as well. So here you can see I'm looking at um, uh, revenue for my last 12 months. It's also going to show my moving average. Uh, if I wanted to look at that in a different uh, style there, I can um, do a bar graph or an area graph. Um, if I'm wanting to look at something else, it's very easy to add um, different either out of box or custom KPIs of things that we're wanting to track. So for instance, if I wanted to add another one here and do uh, take a look at our expenses, it's just as simple as adding that, uh, hitting save, and that's going to add that specific um, KPI um, right onto this in, in a series. So I'm able to see both my revenue, both my expenses, and then my moving averages for both of those. Uh, these are all real time. 
and uh, so as any data is being posted into the system, these will refresh and you'll have the ability to always have the most up-to-date data. As we scroll down here, we're going to see uh, a KPI portlet. Uh, I know I've used the word KPI uh, a few times or the acronym already. Um, the way that NetSuite defines a KPI is really anything that's quantifiable. So anything that can be measured um, and has a date on it can be a KPI within NetSuite. There's gonna be a, a slew of out of the box KPIs um, that are gonna be available, um, plus the ability to configure any of your own. So as you're thinking of different sorts of data that might be relevant for you, whether that's sales data, you know, financial data, um, operational data, you know, uh, statistical data, maybe the number of current customers, our number of current open contracts, um, other things like uh, recurring revenue, uh, any of that data that's um, either within NetSuite or uh, data that we bring in from other systems and put on the platform is data that can be displayed here. So um, you can see we're looking at a few uh, different elements here that we've determined are important for us uh, in this environment. Um, so we're looking at comparisons of sales for this month to last month. Maybe we're wanting to trend and look at our expenses. Um, again, this is all going to be um, dynamic. I can pop these out into trend graphs, uh, even do some year over year analysis to see how that's trending based on uh, prior years. So all very relevant, all easy to get to. Um, and you'll also notice that this does have have uh, hyperlink capabilities on these. So if I'm wanting to drill down to the underlying data of any of these transactions, so for instance, if I wanted to get to um, the uh, expenses for this period so far, if I go ahead and open that in a new tab, it's going to take me down to my income statement. I'm going to be able to see what I have so far this year in expenses, um, and even from there, drill down to the underlying transactions. So if I wanted to actually look at um, and see what transactions are making up my travel and entertainment expenses so far, uh, we can say, uh, we can see we have transactions here. Um, these are journal entries that have been brought in, but if you had expense reports or vendor bills or or anything else, uh, any other sorts of transactions that are coming in, you're always gonna be able to drill down to that right from a dashboard, right to your income statement or financial statement, uh, and then one more click to get, to get down to the underlying transactions. Again, these are also very easy to, um, uh, to manipulate. Um, there are gonna be a lot of these that are standard out of the box. If I'm wanting to trend maybe um, what our number of employees are or our fixed assets value, it's just a matter of adding that KPI, um, de determining which period we wanna do a comparison on that against, um, and then hitting save. As I mentioned as well, you can create an unlimited amount of custom KPIs to, uh, depending on the sort of data that you're wanting to query within the system. Uh, what you'll see here right below um, our KPI portlet is what we call a subsidiary navigator. This subsidiary navigator portlet is going to allow you to limit the information displayed on your dashboard, um, any additional uh, data that's on your um, safe searches or reports to a specific subsidiary or a specific level of consolidation if you are managing multiple subsidiaries within your environment. So for instance, if I wanted to look at, um, right now I'm looking at all of the data on my dashboard from a consolidated perspective. If I wanted to look at just data from the United States, I can click on the United States and you're gonna see it's going to refresh my entire dashboard. And now I'm looking at performance uh, for all the KPIs and information that's showing on my dashboard for just um, my US based entity. So uh, it's a very easy way to do quick analysis um, on uh, any of your subsidiaries or level of consolidation if you do have multiple subsidiaries that you are managing. Uh, additionally, if you have certain roles that only have access to certain subsidiaries, um, by default, you're only gonna be able to see um, the data that, is, um, that you have access to based on your user role and permissions. A couple more things that I want to show you here quickly. Um, below the subsidiary navigator here, we have what we call a KPI scorecard. So we looked at above what that KPI portlet was, which is uh, a combination of a few different uh, metrics. Our scorecards are really built around different functional areas. So you can see this one is based on um, uh, some metrics around our, our, our SaaS business. So it's going to be able to show us um, a grouping of different KPIs that are of like um, type um, and allow us to specify different periods that we're wanting, uh, multiple periods that we're wanting to compare. So you can see here, we're looking at um, things about total contract value, um, some of our churn rate information, uh, contract acquisition cost, lifetime values of customers. So this is um, 
Th these are all things that are also pulling right from the system, pulling from uh, real-time data. Uh, and if you're ever wanting to look to see uh, you know, some uh, additional trending like we saw above, or click on this and see what the actual um, uh, formula was that uh, was used to generate this KPI, you can click on that and it's going to show you that information right here. Um, I'm going to scroll back up. Um, a couple more quick things I want to show you. Um, up here on the top left is what we call uh, the reminders portlet. Uh, think of this as a, a digital assistant um, within NetSuite. It's going to be a combination of a to-do list and a manage by exception. So if you think about to-do lists within the context of your ERP system, those could be things like approvals, those could be periods that need to be closed, um, tasks that are assigned to you that need to be completed. Um, or just exceptions. So anything that you can think of to, to define that could be an exception can be generated here to display in your reminders area, as well as um, um, being able to generate email alerts and reminders to you. So for instance here, if I were to go back and start showing data for my entire organization again, instead of just uh, filtering down to the US, um, I can see uh, one of the reminders that I've created to manage exceptions is that I have um, an invoice that is greater than 30 days old that is more than $50,000. So enable to stay on top of cash flow and, and identify those outliers, I can create these um, very specific um, or broad Broad sort of queries right from the user interface that allows us to populate specific data and then actually drill down to the to that data right from our reminders area. So a lot of power there in terms of not only managing to do's like approvals and other sorts of tasks that need to happen within the system, but then also uh, able to um, identify outliers and exceptions to be able to allow you to manage those, um, uh, take notes on those or uh, take action. Um, if I scroll to the top here, um, you're going to see we have what we call our global search. So our global search is essentially a Google search of our entire system. Um, it's going to search all of our records. It's going to search all of our transactions. Um, it doesn't matter where in the system it is. Um, it's all going to be indexed and able to be searched here. So if I wanted to start searching for a vendor, um, I can start typing in that. Uh, you see we have a vendor, AAA Consulting. We have a, a contact that's associated to that. Um, I could um, click and actually drill right to that vendor. Um, if I wanted to restrict my search to just maybe vendor bills, and let's say I didn't know the whole number of the vendor bill. I can type in 348 um, because I know that that has that in there uh, and that's going to use that as a wild card and allow me to actually um, <coughs> uh, find that vendor bill and actually drill right down to it. Uh, I'm going to drill down to that really quick just to kind of give you an example um, of uh, something that you can do uh, once you are within a transaction or within a specific area of the system. So right now you, you can see I'm in a vendor bill. I can see who it's for, that it's paid in full. I can see what, uh, that, what expense it was. I could add a file to it. But what I want to show you here is the help area. So by clicking on help, um, it's actually going to take me to um, contextual based help. So because it knows I'm on a vendor bill, if I click help, it's going to take me to the vendor bill information uh, or, or area of the help section. Um, additionally, we have a full knowledge base area that's going to allow you to um, type in any errors, um, go see any videos or support cases that are around that so that you have the ability to go in and um, be able to do a lot of self-help um, if you are uh, experiencing any errors or have any questions about how to use the system. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my dashboard. And before I show you a little bit into financial reporting, before we hop into um, some of the billing and revenue management, I just want to give you a quick idea on how NetSuite's uh, general ledger uh, and, and its database is architected, um, because I think it's really going to um, uh, come into play as we're going throughout the system um, and, and you're looking at how things are structured as we're going through billing and revenue management. So it, it, as you see in this slide, this is what we typically see in legacy ERP applications on the left. So you have your separate subledgers for AR and AP, maybe another subledger for projects, um, and you have those that are going to batch up to your, your main GL. Um, if you have multiple entities that you're managing, you may have a consolidated reporting engine that's managing all of that where you're running an additional batch process um, to perform consolidated financials. 
Uh, NetSuite has really gotten away from that model um, by having a, a, a single general ledger uh, centric system. Um, so there's not going to be separate uh, sub ledgers that need to batch up to your GL. As AR and AP or, or revenue recognition is posted, that's going to post directly to the, to the GL in real time, um, as well as consolidating. So if you do have multiple entities, entities that need to consolidate, all of that is done in real time. Um, you're always able to run consolidated financials without having to run any separate processes. Um, and then you can um, do any sort of um, eliminations or other intercompany um, work either throughout the month uh, or at the end of the month um, uh, as you're processing your month end um, financial close uh, to be able to um, you know, get your, your closed uh, uh, financial statements. Additionally, what we have seen in traditional general ledger is uh, having to manage account strings. So if you look at um, on the left here, you can see we have our natural account in the A string, maybe looking at things by location, department, classification, um, different subsidiaries, maybe projects. So you have a, a sprawled, um, segmented out GL, makes it hard for financial reporting. Um, and anytime you add a, a new GL account, you have to add every combination of those different ways that you're looking at your, your general ledger. NetSuite's really gotten away from that as well um, by um, creating what we call reportable segments. So anytime you're processing a transaction in NetSuite, whether it's AP, AR, revenue recognition, a journal entry, you really just have to manage to your natural account and then you're just coding your different um, reportable segments to your transactions. And those can be inherited from things like your customers, your items, your vendors, so you're not having to code those manually. And we do also have the ability to create an unlimited amount of custom segments to track different things that you wanna track um, within your environment for uh, financial reporting purposes. So the way that that looks like, um, uh, you know, functionally, if I were to go look quickly at a financial statement, so let's take a quick look at an income statement. Uh, you'll see, I'm going to just see a basic information on an income statement. We have our revenues, we have our um, expenses, um, things of that nature. Um, right now, if I wanted to look, um, I was actually filtered by um, specific departments. If I refresh this, I can see that I uh, see a little bit more of a full um, uh, financial statement here. But where all of that reportable segment um, comes into play is if I'm wanting to look at my different product types or different locations or different departments, I can do that by use, using this column functionality um, and splitting those out. So for instance, if I'm wanting to look at um, class, which we're using as our different product types, I can click on that, hit refresh, and you can see here it's stratifying my financial statement and breaking that out by my different product types. So I have um, a SaaS based product that I sell in a business edition and an enterprise edition. I do have some hardware that goes along with that. Um, I also provide some consulting and training. So without having to um, utilize those account strings or, or, or have a ton of different GL accounts for each type of those um, uh, classifications of business that I'm doing, I can just have those as reportable segments and then start um, use, utilizing those and slicing and dicing my financial statements. Additionally, you can do that with departments or locations. So departments, we typically see more often as cost centers where classifications are profit centers. So you can see here we can stratify that uh, as well um, and then additionally um, start doing filters. So if I wanted to change this back to um, something else, maybe I want to look at accounting uh, periods here. Um, I can hit refresh and that's going to show all of my accounting periods as different columns. Uh, and then I can actually do a filter to say, I want to see um, only inf information for, um, you know, my products uh, or maybe just enterprise edition. Hit OK, hit refresh, and that's going to filter my financial statement. Um, and as it's only really a profit center, I'm seeing some um, just what my revenues are for each one of those, but then also able to see that trended by my different months on my financial statement. So just a quick view into uh, how some of that the financials work um, with those reportable segments and how you're able to slice and dice software or, or your uh, financials based on your different product types um, and or um, departments, locations, subsidiaries, things of that nature. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. I'm gonna change roles to a revenue manager because we're gonna spend some time looking at um, billing and revenue management. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to uh, quick, quickly show you a slide here because um, 
uh, this is really going to set the stage um, and, and show you the framework of, of how billing and revenue management works within NetSuite. Um, so if we take a look, um, uh, we want to take a quick look at item management. So our item master is going to be the core of how we're going to manage what we sell. This has a direct effect on not only how we bill customers, but also how we recognize revenue for these customers. As you can see in the slide, uh, there are several different components that come into play when we're setting up our item master. Uh, first off, we have the ability to control all the accounting parameters of how transactions related to this item are going to post, whether it is the income or deferred revenue accounts or, or how the item is going to just be, uh, be displayed on our financial statements. This can all be set up on the item master to help facilitate all the downstream uh, automation for transaction and reporting purposes. Uh, additionally, this is where we can set up our revenue recognition rules, our default billing schedules and, and pricing models. And, and these can be as simple or as complex as you need, um, depending on what your uh, organizational needs are. So now let's take a quick look at the item master um, within NetSuite. Um, so I'm going to go uh, go ahead and look at um, uh, an item that I have, um, and this is going to be called. Uh, this is going to be a SaaS based item, uh, and this one is just called A1. Um, uh, actually, let's just go take a look at uh, a listing here. So if I go and open up a item here. Uh, and what I want to actually do is, is, is quickly show you a listing of all of our different items. Um, so we have different item types as well. Um, if you're selling uh, hardware, we have an inventory item type. If you're selling um, software, we have a non-inventory or more of a software sort of item. Uh, and if you're doing services, we have a service sort of item that works in conjunction with our professional services automation uh, solutions as well. So if I go ahead and take a look at this item, um, this is uh, in our enterprise edition of a SaaS license. Um, you can see here, this is where we're going, going to be uh, handling things like um, how we're going to be coding it. So you can see we have our item name and number. Um, you can see if we're going to, this one we're actually posting to both the classification and a department. So anytime this item is used by default, this is where it's going to post um, uh, from our reportable segments that we just talked about. Um, and then from a revenue recognition standpoint, um, you can see this is how we're actually going to recognize revenue for this item. So we have revenue recognition rules, which we'll talk about here shortly, um, that are going to allow us to determine how we want to re recognize revenue. So for this one, because it is a SaaS based license, we're going to see we're going to uh, recognize this um, even periods. Uh, we're going to prorate the first and, and last um, period. Um, and if we're doing any sort of fair value allocations um, for ASC 606 compliance, uh, we can have this grouped into different um, uh, categories for um, allocation purposes. Uh, additionally, as I was alluding to before, um, you can see here at the bottom, we have our different price levels. So if you have, um, you know, different groupings of customers that you have specific price books for, um, we can set up those different price levels. You can also do quantity based pricing. So uh, it automates um, the, that when you're uh, adding orders into the system based on the price levels and the quantities that are selected there. So uh, a lot of um, automation that can be done um, uh, just here from the item master. Uh, additionally, you can see we, we are going to say by default, um, we're going to typically be billing this item annually um, uh, for a one year contract. Uh, you could also set up any sort of other billing schedules and we'll talk about here in a few minutes as well. Um, uh, additionally, as I was talking about before, this is where you also determine where is this going to post? When it actually posts, this is where it's going to post for income, and this is where it's going to post from a deferred revenue standpoint, um, uh, since we are utilizing revenue recognition for this. Lastly, um, looking at the related records tab, this is going to show us um, looking throughout the entire system, every single time this item's been on a transaction, whether that's been a sales order, whether that's been on an invoice, whether that's been on a journal entry, um, will I be able to uh, have a, um, a comprehensive list just right here from the item record, um, being able to see all the records this has been related to. All right, so I wanna show you a, a slide here really quick. Um, now that we've talked a little bit about uh, how the core of how we set up of what we sell, let's take a look at actually processing an order. But before we do that, I want to just show you a high level process flow of how uh, order management works inside of NetSuite. 
uh, as you can see in the diagram here, uh, sales orders in NetSuite can be uh, created in a variety of different ways. Uh, NetSuite does have a fully featured CRM system. Um, and while that is not the focus of our demonstration today, we do have the ability to convert a quote right to a sales order right within NetSuite. Uh, additionally, if you're using a, a separate system for quoting or, or customer front end, um, we can bring that data in to create sales order as well. Um, so whether that's via a CSV file, an API integration to a homegrown or an external system, uh, or through a commonly used integration to Salesforce, now we have a great deal of flexibility um, on how we bring those orders into NetSuite. Uh, so you can see here, once that sales order is approved um, or, or brought into NetSuite, we can trigger approvals um, and or validation of those order, orders via a workflow. Uh, NetSuite does have a robust workflow tool called SuiteFlow, uh, which can facilitate order routing based on criteria like dollar amount, uh, variance of price to our list price, or, or really anything else that you think of that you might want to evaluate before um, allowing that order to be processed. So once that order has been approved or validated, this is where a lot of the magic starts to happen. First off, as you can see in the diagram, revenue recognition and billing are completely separate tracks. Uh, with NetSuite's revenue recognition engine, um, billing and revenue have been completely decoupled and are able to be managed independently of each other. So as soon as the order is approved, uh, NetSuite creates what we call a revenue arrangement, which is going to house all the revenue information for this order. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, since software companies will often have multiple product offerings that could sit on a single order, we can see that there are three different process flows that can be uh, taken, uh, take place as soon as we are, uh, start processing this order. So for any of the software-based products, we can create billing schedules, which allow us to control when we are going to be invoicing the customer for the software. Um, or if there are any hardware components to the sale, those can be either fulfilled directly from inventory or drop shipped from our vendors. Um, this process is completely seamless from both the procurement and inventory standpoint, and is always going to be linked back to that original sales order. And then lastly, if you're uh, completing any professional services or project-based work for the implementation or support of your software, you can utilize the project management functionality within NetSuite to facilitate not only the completion of work through task and resource management, but also the billing portion of it through, uh, as well, whether you're doing time and materials, charge-based billing, uh, or fixed bid projects. So let's actually take a look to see what this looks like uh, inside of NetSuite. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, navigate to uh, a sales order here, um, sales order 331. So as I navigate to here, um, this is just a, a basic sales order form. Um, when we talk about forms inside of NetSuite, those are, are really going to allow you to control um, how and what you want to show whenever you're um, looking at different forms, whether it's a sales order or an invoice or an AP bill. It's gonna allow you to determine where you want the fields to be, which fields you want to show, if there are additional user-defined fields you wanna add. It's very simple and easy to do and, and something that we always train um, the end user to do as part of the implementation process. So you can see here, um, this is actually linked to a, um, a project that's called ABC Implementation. Uh, we have a memo here talking about that we have a, a SaaS license implementation and hardware that are part of this order. Um, we also have a sales rep field here, uh, which can be used for sales reporting, you know, and or any sorts of commissions and things of that nature if you are gonna be processing uh, commissions for your orders. What you'll see here on the top right as well is what we call drag and drop files. So um, if you wanted to add something like a signed customer agreement or any other supporting documentation uh, for this, that's something that you can add right to uh, the sales order and will be uh, added into the NetSuite filing cabinet as well. So um, for instance, if I go to my communication tabs here, I can see I've uploaded a signed customer agreement um, and I could actually reference back to that if I need to. We also have um, uh, integrations with DocuSign and, and other document management or, or signing sort of platforms as well, if you wanna facilitate the actual signatures of that um, in conjunction with your transactions as well. So you can see here, um, we have four different items here that we're looking at on this specific sales order. Um, we have uh, time and materials for the implementation of our software. Um, you can see here, we actually have a billing schedule for um, time and materials that we're gonna be billing them weekly for, any of those time and materials that are incurred. Um, 
and you can see here that it's going to be coded to our professional services department um, and our, uh, our consulting services consulting classification from a revenue perspective. You can also see that we have a discount that we've applied to the software uh, or to our professional services. So you can see that's a 15% discount that's been applied and that will come into play here a little bit when we start talking about revenue recognition as well. Um, then you actually have our, our SAS license itself. So we can see here, this is the item that we were looking at earlier. Um, you can see that they had ordered a, a quantity of two uh, for $12,000 each. You can see we've actually changed this one. We're gonna be billing them quarterly for one year for this. And then we can see what the term start and end date is. The nice part about this is this is gonna help drive both revenue recognition and then any, any sort of contract renewals or reminders that need to happen as this contract comes up um, for renewal um, or expiration. Uh, and then our last item here, you can see we have a, um, uh, they, they need some sort of local hardware component to support their SaaS software. Um, and this one we've uh, determined that we're going to be billing up front. Um, and we also see on the right here that we have a linked PO. So we didn't have any of these, these in our own inventory. So we generated a purchase order for a drop ship. Um, you can either do drop ship to send it directly to your customer or uh, maybe a special order to bring it into your own inventory if you need to do some configuration or something on that device um, ahead of time. So you can see each, um, each one of these items has its own billing schedule. Um, and so if I actually go to uh, my billing tab, I'm gonna be able to see that there's a billing schedule um, and it's going to tell me on um, what days I'm gonna be doing billing, how much they're gonna be doing that um, based on all of those billing schedules that are set at each one of the lines um, of those different items that we're selling on here. You're gonna also see a related records tab. So anytime transactions are being processed against the sales order, you're always gonna be able to see those on this tab. So um, this invoice was generated automatically during our billing run um, for the first payment of their, their SaaS um, uh, subscription, as well as for the hardware, because we did send that right away. Um, we can see the linked purchase order for the hardware um, and how we had shipped that hardware out to them using an item fulfillment. And then we'll also see the revenue arrangement here, which we're going to talk about here in a second, which is really going to house the, the revenue for this um, for this entire sales order. Um, if I actually click on the invoice and open this invoice, um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna be able to say, see what's on this invoice, see the total dollar amount. And just as a, to show you here, I can click on GL impact. And this is actually gonna show me the impact to the general ledger that this transaction made. So traditionally what you would have noticed in, um, you know, in a standard invoice is that we would um, debit our AR and we'd credit revenue. But because um, our revenue arrangement is going to handle all of the revenue for this uh, order, you can see that we're actually um, crediting at our deferred revenue account and we're gonna let the revenue management engine um, take um, take place of, or uh, take care of all the revenue postings uh, for this, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So now that we've actually talked about the order part of this process, um, let's talk a little bit about um, how NetSuite's gonna handle the rev, uh, revenue recognition part of this um, specific order or, or contract. Uh, so NetSuite's advanced uh, revenue management solutions uh, really helps companies comply with accounting standards, whether it's AC 605, 606, IFRS 15, um, and it's going to allow you to report uh, your financial results in a timely manner. So the, the solution is going to automate revenue forecasting, allocation, recognition, uh, any sort of reclassification, uh, and auditing through uh, rule-based events and, uh, and the handling framework. So whether your business conducts sales transactions that consist of products or services or both, um, whether these transactions occur at a single point in time or across different milestones, um, the revenue recognition engine is going to help you schedule, calculate, and present revenue on your financial statements accurately. Uh, as you can see here, this slide identifies um, the five-step model uh, for revenue recognition as is defined by uh, RevRec standards. First, we're going to identify the contract with the customer. Uh, within that contract, there will be either a single or multiple performance obligations that need to be fulfilled as part of that contract. Uh, and then next, we'll need to determine the aggregate transaction price for all of those performance obligations. Um, and after that, we'll need to allocate that transaction price out to each one of those individual performance obligations as outlined in the contract. Uh, and so 
there are you know, some uh, companies that we work with that have very complex allocations um, and sometimes they are just uh, very uh, standard or basic where they're just the whatever their uh, standalone selling price is. So um, while this does have a lot of power and can be very complex, it also can be very simple depending on what your requirements are. So, and then for step five last, we, we will recognize revenue when or as performance obligations are being uh, satisfied. So NetSuite's revenue management engine is closely mirrored to this process uh, and how it was designed uh, with step one being identified uh, the contract. Um, NetSuite has created that transaction that we just are going to be looking at called the revenue arrangement and that's going to house all the performance obligations of the contract. And if, if when we think about performance obligations, those are really just sales order lines. So SaaS being one of those, delivering them uh, the physical hardware is going to be one of those performing the um, actual installation or the implementation will be one. So um, those are really just a one-to-one -one relationship to those sales order lines. Um, and that could be coming off of a single sales order or we can even merge multiple sales orders into a single revenue arrangement if you have uh, separate sales orders that are gonna be uh, housing that. Uh, step two of that is going to be, uh, two and three really are gonna be revenue recognition process that are housed in what we call that revenue element, which is are those um, sales order lines that we just alluded to. Um, these are going to be our individual performance obligations um, and these are where we're going to be determining our transaction price which are really just the total amount of all of those different sales order lines combined. So once that's been determined if there are any revenue allocation needs to take place um, as is indicated in that step four um, NetSuite does have an engine to manage those revenue allocations for us um, using an uh, allocation calculator which is built into the process. So this is all set up ahead of time um, you know, throughout implementation. So each one each time you're processing these transactions it really requires little to no interaction um, as they're working their way through the system. And then lastly, the step five of the process, which includes recognizing revenue as these performance obligations are being met, is handled through revenue rules, uh, which in turn create what we call revenue plans. This is also an automated process that is managed as we set up our items um, in the contracts that we talked about earlier. So let's actually take a look um, to show you what that looks like um, with inside of NetSuite. So if I actually go from the sales order and go back to um, my uh, related records, um, I, can, I can actually get to my revenue arrangement right from there. So if I click on related records, click on, uh, click on revenue arrangement, this is where we're going to see um, really all the revenue information about this contract. So here we're going to be able to see our transaction price, which was that step three we talked about of the revenue recognition model. We'll also be able to see what the carve out amount is. So the, the carve out amount is really just the total amount of revenue that's been moved between the elements um, because, and that happened because of the way that we had actually priced this specific contract. And again, NetSuite's going to handle all that for you automatically. Um, as you can see down here below, we have all of our revenue elements. So these revenue elements um, are, as we talked about, are just those, each one of those sales order lines that are, are showing as, um, as our revenue elements. And these are gonna be our performance obligations. So as we look at these, we can see you know, the, the customer and project that it's linked to, where was it sourced from, um, what is the item, uh, what's the discounted sales amount, um, how much has it been calculated from fair value as NetSuite runs through that for you. Um, uh, and then you're gonna see here, how are we recognizing revenue for each one of these performance obligations? Obligations. So you can see here for our professional services, we're doing it when we're billing. Um, for our SaaS um, based product, we're doing it um, prorated uh, even periods um, during the term of the contract. And we can see actually the start date and end date of the contract here. And then for our hardware item, you can see here, we're gonna be doing that based on fulfillment. So whenever we actually ship that uh, hardware device out to the customer is when we are saying um, our performance obligation for that has been met. You also see some other information here, you know, what's, what's going to be actually the financial impact, where are we going to be posting these revenue and deferred revenue as we're uh, working through this revenue arrangement. So as we talked about, so we have our revenue arrangement, which is housing all of our sales order lines. We have our revenue elements, which are our different uh, individual sales order lines. And then we have what we call revenue plans. Um, these revenue plans, um, and I'll give you a, an example of one for our SaaS based license. These are going to be um, uh, what is actually going to uh, be uh, recognized on a, any given period uh, or how that amount is actually going to be recognized. So if I actually click on this revenue plan, uh, and expand this out a little bit for you. Um, we're going to be able to see the exact schedule 
um, based on those rules that we'd set up. So again, no interaction required of when revenue is going to be recognized for this uh, specific um, SaaS based license. So we can see we've already, uh, we have a couple journals that were automatically created for June and July um, in those posting periods. And then we can see what our planned revenue is going to be um, for the next um, 10 months. Um, as we are going to be going throughout the rest of this contract. Um, we'll be able to see how much is being recognized in each period. So if there was some prorating in, in uh, uh, beginning and end periods, we'd be able to see that. And then we'll be able to always know from a contract how much of that contract's been recognized and how much is remaining. All of that's housed by this revenue plan. Again, it's all automated based on all of the information that we set up about your items um, and the contracts as they're being entered into the system. If I go back to the revenue arrangement and look at my allocation detail, so um, this is uh, on this tab, we're going to see all of our elements, what their base fair value is, and whether or not the sales price equaled their fair value. So you can see here in this uh, situation, uh, it didn't because there was a discount that was involved. Um, and so uh, using the fair value formulas that were set up as part of implementation, um, that's where we saw this carve out amount in, in which some of that revenue was uh, moved around between those different elements to ensure that we're staying compliant from an ASC 606 perspective. So in summary, on this screen, we're looking at the revenue element, um, or sorry, uh, we're looking at the revenue arrangement as a whole, which is our contract and indicates our uh, total transaction price. We have our individual performance obligations, um, which are our revenue elements, which we're looking at here, associated with each one of those rel uh, revenue elements. We've determined how we want to recognize revenue for each one um, using those revenue recognition rules. And then lastly, using the fair value allocation formulas, revenue has been allocated to each one of those performance obligations in accordance to our uh, revenue recognition policy. So once all of this takes place, we have the ability to either automate or review our revenue postings uh, or whatever at whatever interval you choose to do, the, uh, do so. Um, so if I actually go to my revenue tab um, and then go to uh, re revenue recognition journal entries, this is where I can set those schedules to happen automatically. Um, if I'm actually wanting to go run that ad hoc or see maybe what's due up from a revenue perspective, I can click on that run now. Um, you can see I can choose the posting period. And this is going to show me all of the revenue that's being uh, planned during this specific period and allow me to actually generate the journal entries, which is going to uh, move that revenue over from uh, deferred revenue into our uh, relevant revenue accounts. You can see we have the detail to get down to uh, each one of those uh, revenue uh, transactions uh, with our items, what the revenue plan number is, who the customer's for, uh, what that rule was, and the total revenue amount. So it just is as easy as clicking create journal entries. It's going to post all the revenue for all of our contracts for this month. Uh, and again, this can something you can uh, do on your own or something that you can have run on a schedule um, so that you uh, are not having to manage any of that. Um, uh, in a in more of a manual way. Um, so now let's take a look at some of the reporting that's available that works in conjunction with the revenue management engine. So I go back to my revenue tab and look at revenue reports. Um, one of the great reports we have here is called a billing and revenue summary. And what this is going to be is it's going to be a report that's going to show us all of our contracts in the system, uh, the total amount, um, how much has been billed, uh, how much has been planned, how much is recognized, and how much is deferred. We can also see all of the source transactions for which these uh, values are coming from. So for instance, this is showing every single one of our uh, sales orders, which are just our contracts, uh, who the customers are, um, and all the information about that. If I actually wanted to customize this report, um, I could go in here uh, and say, you know what, I actually want to have this grouped by customer. I can move the customer over to the left here, say group, and if I go back to look at this report, now this is actually broken down by customer. Um, and so it's gonna show me not only by customer, but then the individual transactions um, for each one of those. If I wanted to um, uh, collapse this, then I could look at uh, just our customers as a whole, uh, if they did have multiple uh, contracts in the system, and then and look at those aggregated amounts for how much um, their contracts are, what's been billed, planned, um, recognized, and deferred. 
Uh, additionally, we have a deferred re uh, revenue waterfall uh, among some other revenue reports that's going to allow us to uh, essentially look by date um, how much um, based on um, the deferred revenue type that we're managing, um, what our um, deferred balance is, and then how much we're planning to recognize in each one of our periods moving forward. So it allows us to do some forecasting there for upcoming revenue um, automatically based on um, the contracts and, and those revenue plans that are in the system. All right, so the last thing that we're going to take a look at today is just a very quick look at um, project management or what NetSuite would call professional services automation functionality within NetSuite. Um, so NetSuite's project management module seamlessly integrates with the NetSuite accounting uh, system. Uh, so in addition to project management and time and expense tracking, you can create and issue invoices, compare project performance to budgets and other metrics. Um, the project management module works in lockstep also with revenue recognition, uh, expenses, unbilled balances, and other product uh, project related financials. Um, on, on this screen, you're going to see uh, project management in NetSuite can be really as simple or as comprehensive as needed, depending on your organizational needs. Um, in this diagram, there are several di different components of project management, um, starting with managing your of your opportunities and pipeline. If you are using CRM functionality in NetSuite, um, you can also appropriately find and staff available resources for upcoming projects. Um, if there's an opportunity that is actually going to move forward, you can complete allocation of those resources to project tasks to ensure that those um, projects are going to be appropriately staffed. Uh, additionally, um, those resources, once assigned, can track time and expenses to those project tasks. Uh, approvals can be routed to project managers or supervisors as needed. Uh, and as, as we saw in the sales order before, we have several different ways we can build our projects as well, um, as, can, as well as complete control over their revenue recognition pro uh, process, whether we're um, recognizing revenue upon billing uh, or up, up, uh, upon percent complete um, based on our actuals to estimates for the amount of time we're anticipating to spend on that project. So let's just take a really quick look of, at the project management functionality within NetSuite. So I'm going to switch roles really quick to the project manager role. Uh, so you can see here my dashboard is, is going to be uh, much more specific to project management now that I've switched roles. I'm going to be able to see uh, reminders here for tasks that need to be completed, time records that need to be approved, or expense, report that need, expense reports that need to be approved. Um, I can see key performance indicators around project resources, um, number of open jobs, um, our, our billing forecast based on information that's in the system from uh, time tracked and other sorts of forecasting. Um, I'm also going to be able to just look at all of my open jobs and other sorts of things like total amount of, um, of uh, professional services dollars that have been invoiced over time uh, or total amount of hours worked for my different professional services resources. Um, if I were to actually drill down into a project record here, you'll be able to see the different things that we're able to do from a project perspective. So you can see here, um, we have our project name, we have our, the, the customer that the project is linked to. Um, we do have the ability to templatize projects. So if you have consistency on how you're doing your software deployments, uh, you can set up different project tasks um, and, and create um, uh, templates that'll allow you to not have to create projects from scratch each time you're creating a new project. So in here in the project overview, you're going to be able to see, you know, how much, how many hours are we anticipating to spend on this? Of those hours, how much has been allocated to resources? How much has actually been completed? How much is remaining? I'll give you an idea of the percent work complete based on all those values, and also some idea of um, based on your re uh, allocation of those resources when the project's going to start and when the project's going to end. Down below here, we'll be able to see all the project tasks and milestones. So you can actually uh, associate resources or assign resources at a project task level. Um, from a project management perspective, you can um, not only assign resources, but you can budget um, time for each one of these tasks. Uh, you can set if there's predecessors that need to um, be completed before this task is done um, using different types of, um, of constraints. Um, any time that's tracked, you're going to be able to see any of those time entries that are tracked here um, and uh, send any, any other sort of information you need to about this specific project task. Again, we also have uh, file management capabilities, so you can drag files here, uh, information about the project, maybe scoping documents, other things of that nature. 
Um, you'll also be able to um, track time um, right from uh, either the NetSuite interface or from a mobile interface. Um, uh, from a, a financial perspective, you, we, uh, throughout implementation, create different groupings so that you can look at a project P&L at any time. So if you're wanting to look at, you know, how much money am I making on this project for my services? How much money am I making on this project uh, for software? Um, maybe hardware as well. It can bring all that information in from all different transactions within the system so that you always have an idea from a profitability standpoint um, uh, how your projects are doing, um, not only at a, a macro level, um, but at a micro level, so that you're able to um, uh, just have a very clear idea of margins and profitability for the different areas of the, the projects that you're completing. Uh, last thing I'm going to show you really quick, just because we're running short on time. Um, so the ability to track time. So we have um, uh, the ability to do a, a weekly timesheet. Um, these weekly timesheets can be filled out um, either from that sweet interface or from a, a mobile perspective. Um, so here uh, I can fill out a timesheet. All I have to do is indicate the job that I'm working on. Um, so we're gonna see we're working on our phase one deployment. Um, which project task am I completing this work to? Is this a billable um, time or not? And then what type of work am I doing? And this type of work that you're doing can help uh, any of the accounting portion in terms of um, bill rates, in terms of cost rates, um, in terms of where things are going to post to your financial systems. So we're just, or, or financial statements. Um, as, so I just cho chose consulting here. We can see here based on my employee record, um, it uh, populated my department and the classification that we wanted this to go to. And then I just have to put in my time here. I can put in however many hours I worked. If I wanted to add any sort of notes here um, of, of what I did, um, I can add uh, any sorts of memo information there as well. So very easy to add uh, time to multiple projects. Um, if you do have allocated time, um, you can have that auto populate so that you only have to really manage exceptions and add any sorts of memos or notes or anything of that nature. And then lastly, any expenses that need to happen. Um, Similar to time, you can enter in expenses. You're just choosing which project you're gonna be associating those expenses to. Um, check, uh, choosing a specific product um, uh, or a category for those expenses. So uh, whether that's you know airfare, meals, things of that nature, um, putting in the amount for that expense uh, and then billing that to a specific customer, um, whether it's gonna be a, a billable or non-billable sort of expense. Uh, and then you can drag and drop receipts here. If you wanted to use the mobile, you, know, you can upload uh, receipts and, and do uh, expense management um, from the mobile, just like you could from a time tracking perspective. So I think that's all the time that we have in terms of just doing a basic overview of, of project management. Um, so just uh, as a wrap up, that really concludes uh, today's uh, demonstration. Um, today we went over an overview of NetSuite covering some dashboards, KPIs and, re and reports specific to the software industry. We also took a look at processing orders and related billing schedules uh, and revenue recognition and finished by taking a quick peek into the project management functionality within NetSuite. Uh, hopefully you saw today just a glimpse into how NetSuite might fit into your organization uh, with a, a wide variety of features designed to accommodate both simple and complex business models uh, and processes. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it back to you, Dino. Thank you, Ethan, for a great demonstration. I want to uh, open it up for any questions and answers. I don't see any on the, uh, on the chat or the question and answer section. So. Uh, if you do have questions, please reach out to your client success managers. From a next step perspective, we also want to make sure that you understand that we understand that NetSuite is a journey from implementation to optimization. And iBailey is here for you uh, with a number of different services options that allow you to uh, use on-demand support as well as many managed services uh, for support as you implement and optimize your systems. Thank you again for uh, attending today. This concludes our webinar. Thank you.